Today I'm going to revisit the basic cleric. Because everybody knows, the cleric is one of the most iconic classes in all fantasy adventure RPG settings. I'm going to give a little bit of backstory here why I'm even doing this to begin with. As most of you out there already know, I have had the great pleasure of teaching and hosting a group of disabled military veterans how to play 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons at a local VA day center, which I just happened to attend myself. Every one of them look forward to every single session. I even get repeated phone calls throughout the week wanting to know different things about how they can expand on their characters, uh, what they might need to know. And I'm more than happy to help these guys out at the drop of a hat. I had originally started making this series with them in mind so that they could have a video catalog that they could repeatedly go back to so they can get the information and you know some of them might have forgotten about it. It has since then became a very fantastic refresher for myself and for several people that I call my friends on Discord. So if you want to check them out, they're the Tabletop Dungeoneers. And I am extending to you a welcome to come join us for a conversation about several topics that we happen to cover. I'll even have links to all their channels down there in the description area. Check them out. So let's get on with this before I really do get off track. It would be nearly impossible to put the 5th edition cleric in a nutshell. To do that, you'd have to go all the way back to basic and 1st edition, which I will put a link to my cleric video for 1st edition gameplay for anybody who's interested in it. Put it right over here somewhere in one of these corners. I made this video back when I was first starting out on this platform last year. All of the 5th edition subclasses have just one thing in common. That's the reason why they're in the game to begin with. You are backup support and you give aid to party members in need of buffs and healing while adventuring. Of course you have to take alignment and deity of choice into effect also, but I'll return to that at a different date. As you can tell from all my previous cleric videos, which I will put a link to the folder which they're in, it's one of these two corners, I can't remember which one it is. They all wear a different hat, while at the same time serving their primary function of their class. With every level you gain as a cleric, you receive new bonuses, features, spells, and in some cases, all the above. I know some of you out there might be getting a little bit confused about this. I know a few people are going to be calling me up here pretty soon after they watch this video. I just hope that this video will help clear up some of the fog out there that surrounding the cleric. So if you ask me in the comments down below, I'll be more than happy to elaborate and help you out. If I get enough questions, I'm going to make a cleric specific Q&A video with all you guys in mind. Ask away, please. It'll help me out. I'm going to try to keep in mind that I need to have this as simple as I can for those beginners out there just wanting to know something about clerics. The cleric has been and will be the backbone of your party. When you start adding all of your additional subclass benefits, you can really maximize your character to become one of the most powerful in your party, which I will cover maximization in another video when I make a class subclass builds. Starting out at first level, you have a plus two to your proficiency bonus, which every class has that basically. You also get your Divine Domain spellcasting, which means you choose your domain and you follow your subclass rules along with the base cleric rules. Next, you get three cantrips of your choice from first level. And you get two first level spells of your choice from the cleric spell list on page 207 of your player's handbook. And then you have your two domain specific spells. Now that's pretty cool. You get four spells and three cantrips right off the bat. You can see where this is going. You're going to be a powerhouse when you're done here. At second level, you're able to turn undead 
once per long rest. This is fueled by your channel divinity. That would be uh, an undead creature such as a crawling claw, a skeleton, or even a zombie. You get your divine domain feature and another first level cleric spell of your choice on top of that. At third level, you gain another first level cleric spell, of course. Then you get two second level cleric spells. Pretty good, right? Then, on top of that, you get the two spells from your domain choice. So that's it's starting to rack up some pretty good spells here. It only gets better from here. At fourth level, you get to increase one of your ability scores by two, or two of your ability scores by one. You get to pick another cantrip and choose another second level cleric spell. At fifth level, your proficiency bonus goes up to three. And you're now able to destroy undead that have a challenge rating of half or lower. Uh, that would include uh, shadows and the skeletal war horse. You also gain two third level cleric spells, along with the two more spells that you get from your domain choice. At sixth level, you get your second channel divinity or a divine domain feature which you can use now twice between long rests and you get one third level clerical spell of your choice. At seventh level, you gain a fourth level spell and then you get two more domain feature spells. At eighth level, you get to adjust another ability score by two or two by one and you get another domain feature. You also get another fourth level clerical spell. And you can destroy undead with a challenge rating of one or lower. Now this would start to include ghouls and specters. At ninth level, your proficiency bonus goes up to a four. You add uh, one new fifth level clerical spell. And you get two additional final domain feature spells. You get a fifth cantrip. Another fifth level spell added to your list. And now you have divine intervention. If you ask me, this is one of the most powerful tools you can have in your cleric toolbox. With this, you're able to call on your deity in a time of need when it's overwhelming odds against you. This feature is only available for your use once per long rest. If your deity answers your request, you have to wait seven days in order to ask for divine intervention again. When they answer, you're required to make a percentage roll, after which you have to thoroughly describe in detail the assistance that you are in need of. Now, if I didn't know better, I would definitely say that this is starting to sound like the requirements that you need for a wish spell, which I will be elaborating later on in another video. At 11th level, you get a 6th level cleric spell, and you're able to destroy undead with a challenge rating of 2 and lower. This would include ghasts and will-o'-wisps. At 12th level, you're able to adjust another ability score by 2 or 2 by 1. At lucky level number 13, your proficiency bonus increases to 5, and you get a 7th level cleric spell. At 14th level, you get additional effects from some of your domain features, and you can now destroy undead that has a challenge rating of 3 and lower. This would include mummies and whites. At 15th level, you get an 8th level cleric spell. At 16th level, you get to increase one of your ability scores by two, or two of your ability scores by one. At 17th level, your bonus proficiency goes up to six, and you get a ninth level spell, along with your final domain feature. You're also able to destroy undead with a challenge rating of four. Uh, this would be like banshees and ghosts. At 18th level, check this out, you can now use your channel divinity three times per long rest and you get a third fifth level spell. At 
19th level, again, you can adjust your ability scores, one by two or two by one, providing you even have any that are under 20. Finally, at 20th level, you have hit your maximum potential. You get another seventh level spell, and now you have divine intervention improvement, which means when you call on your deity for help, you don't need a die roll. You automatically succeed. And you get another 7th level spell on top of that. All in all, your spell count is now 5 cantrips, 6 first level, 5 second level, 5 third level, 5 fourth level, 3 fifth level, 2 sixth level, 2 seventh level, 1 eighth, and 1 ninth level spell. Bringing your total count to 30 plus spells. This depends on the domain that you choose. Like I said earlier in this video, if you have any questions about the 5th edition cleric, ask me in those comments below. And like I also said, I get enough, I'm going to make a Q&A specific cleric video where I'll answer all your questions on film. Next time on Thaco's Basically Speaking series, I will be bringing you a wrap up of all the subclasses, but it's going to be totally different than any you've probably seen. Will I be seeing you there? I sure hope so. Until next time, thank you for watching. Now, grab your D8 and roll your damage.